Yeah, a major part in golf's history, this place, 1761, eh? And uh, I'm just putting my Hessian jacket on. If you're wondering why, it's homage to Willie Park Jr. and the part he played. And uh, nothing to do with the fact that I look like an escaped inmate right now. Anyway, let's get to that first tee. Well, we're getting set up and the first thing you see when you arrive in a car park is that view. We're literally a couple of miles from Edinburgh City Centre. We've got amazing views of the Firth of Forth, so I can't wait to get out of here. Right, the fourth hole is a stunning par five. First of all, you've got to navigate your way through the fairway, which weaves itself a little bit left to right. You've got some tall pines to navigate your way around. And then when you reach the, hopefully with a short wedge in hand, you've got to get yourself onto that green, somehow find a way of uh, avoiding the two front bunkers, which again, you see the shaping of those. And again, we've talked about the kind of, uh, the architects who've been involved and you can clearly see their input there. And then the greens themselves, the complex, really loads of movement. So uh, even though I've managed to get there, no easy to put over onto this ridge, which we mightn't pick up in uh, this morning's early light, but uh, I can assure you that pin is sat on a uh, bit, bit of a ridge that drops off into where my ball is. But like I said, stunning par five. Brunsfield Link Society is rooted in the origins of Scotland's rich golfing history. The current landscape was originally laid by Willie Park Jr. in 1898 and has since had input by Dr. Alistair McKenzie, James Braid, Fred Hawtrey and more recently Tom McKenzie of Eber and McKenzie, a golf course that has been a constant evolution. Stunning little par three or five. Plenty of uh, protection with those bunkers as well. Oh, it's got to stay, stay on the line. Stay on the line and sit. Sit, sit, sit. That's 195. I played four iron downwind, probably could have got away with a five iron there. Uh, and we're just off the fringe, but a stunning little uh, par three, as you can see, just come off the back of four, is explaining what they've done there. And you can see the bunkering again. Um, a big feature of the course already from what we've seen from the first four holes but again uh, a major part of the protection on that what looks like a tiny green from up here anyway. Right, six hole, I uh, actually hit a tree off of uh, the tee shot, so left a long iron in, of which I stuck into the right bunker. I've now played the shot and I'm sitting on the green, but what interests me and why I walked backwards and got the camera back on, I mentioned the bunkers being a major feature already that we can see, but I love the way in, the, in which they're positioned as well, because a lot of green, a lot of bunkers you see, you sort of, they surround the green, but the way in which they've done this is kind of, we've got one bunker, which is sort of 15 yards short of the green. 
So it's picked up anything that you, you hit short and then anything right and anything left is picked up by the green side bunkers and they're almost cut at like angles across. So it's a real clever way of positioning the bunkers. And uh, unfortunately, like I said, I managed to find this one. I've got out and we've got a bit of a, uh, well, we've got a 15 footer for par. Go on. Oh my word. That is quick. Wow. These greens are pure. <laughs> We're playing what looks to be, I can't even see the flag at the minute. We're playing a little par three, uh, 10. Well, look at the views over there. I think, um, Trying to work that out is that is that perhaps fife over that side I need to get my bearings but whatever anyway what a lovely little location that is Let's see what we've got for this par three we've got a little 114 yard pin stuck on the back and imagine a tiny green and some tricky bunkers Well, 13th holder, 12 and 13, back to back par five, both probably reachable in two with your kind of Sunday best, but arguably you would choose to do what I'm going to do, which is play an iron for your second shot, because again, it's that thing that we've seen on virtually every hole, they stagger the bunkers to catch sort of every distance in terms of the, the next club in. So I've got 235, so that's on my limit in terms of three, we ain't going to get there. Bunker right is 192, so I'm going to look to try and play something in between uh, those two bunkers and leave a wedge in but it's like I've said all the way along the course it's more about a strategy of how you get your way around because on the tee box didn't look anything from what I could see back there but then this hole really opens up for your second shot but then like I said ask that question and uh, where do we want to be for ideally for our third shot in so I've gone with six iron Think that is bang on hopefully you're picking up some ball flight so I've clubbed it so that shouldn't get to the second bunker and I think that's bang on and leave myself a bit of a wedge in but stunning design you know the layout and again the way every hole and I picked up on this one on 13 just seems to sort of meander and weave its way through the bunkers and then when you get to the greens well we'll talk about them in a minute or two I think well we did exactly out of the hope we literally uh, got that yardage bang on in between the two sort of left a uh, 50 yard pitch in and uh, you can already see the movement in the greens from back here so getting near the flag is, is not easy I've found that could be good sit down ball sit down and you just see it just trickle away to the left hand side because like I said reaching the green is one thing but uh, I've found on a few of them Putting on them is no easy task. These things are like lightning. Right, a nice visual for where we've just come from. Um, interestingly enough, and you won't be able to see on that camera there, to get to that pin, there's a slope off this right-hand side, which is then you're taking on this bunker just over the side of it to get the ball close. So I don't think we've finished in too bad of a position. Uphill put. And they're a rarity as well, because uh, coming downhill, it's like lightning, as I've just said. Roll out, just dying off to the left. There's that little slope kicking in there. Uh, never listen to my own advice. So uh, we'll assume we can make that one and uh, par five. But like I said, back to back 12 and 13 really is kind of um, what the course is all about. Like I said, not necessarily overly long, but that strategy of getting the ball from A to B is uh, needs a bit of a thought. I have absolutely no idea how that ball has come to rest. Seriously. It's, and we pitched it short, so it's obviously hot. Oh! Well, there you go. I hadn't addressed the ball, thank God. Wow! It was literally hanging on by um, a couple of blades of grass. Anyway, we might as well stick around for the bunker shot, what is now then. Grab. Uh, not too bad. Right, 16 is clearly a hole where we can uh, and you can have a bit of fun because it's uh, pretty much uh, an island green or we've certainly got water between tea 
and green. Uh, we chose to play it off the white because it's uh, well, it's it's the more fun if you like. We go straight direct over the water to the flag. The yellow tees to the right hand side to the cut across the angle. So uh, we got 156. There's a bit of breeze. I'm playing seven iron, and to be honest with you, I've got to get every bit of it because if this hovers and stalls, well, we'll probably get a bit of a splash. Right, come on, and. Oh, that's good, you know. Be right. Be right. Oh, he got the splash. Oh, that was right on it. I said if it hovers and stalls, and it did just a little bit. Oh, my word. Do you know what? In my head, I was thinking go in the hole. Not go in the water. I said I'd make reference to the greens, and you know what? They've been absolutely pure from start to finish, one to 18, and incredibly quick as well. There's some obvious breaks, but there's also some uh, subtle undulations that you can see even just in this uh, green alone. So it's kind of important that you find the, uh, the right tier, I would say. Uh, but then the pace, I mean, I genuinely have uh, three-putted on uh, quite a few occasions. I just, um, yeah, I'm quite honestly, Maybe the fastest greens I've played on this year. I've done it again. Look at that. I mean, I was just trying to sort of roll the ball up and seriously, it's, uh, it's again, it's gone past to sort of leave that uncomfortable one, I would say. Incredibly good though and pure. Ah, not the best of finishes in terms of that chip, but I've got to say in terms of the game itself, Brunsfield links, how would I sort of uh, summarise, I suppose, and it's absolutely immaculate, as you can see, or hopefully have seen. The greens have been arguably the quickest I've played this year in quite some time, and they're not just fast, they're true. Plenty of movement in them. And I go back to everything I've said throughout, is kind of the, uh, the strategy in which you plot your way around is key to getting round here, but... Uh, and the other key feature of course is just where it's located so close to the city centre makes it an ideal location for whether or not um, you fancy visiting the city of Edinburgh and then getting yourself a nice easy round of golf uh, just a couple of miles outside of the city centre pretty perfect yeah. 